Hello everybody, this is Eric White with OpenXML Developer and this is the fourth in a series of screencasts on doing recursive pure functional transformations. I think that developers who are interested in learning how to do recursive pure functional transformations probably fall into one of two camps. There are those developers who already have exposure to lambda expressions and closures. Lambda expressions and closures have been part of the lexicon of popular programming languages now for about five years. C Sharp has had them for a number of years. JavaScript has had them for even longer, although a lot of people didn't use them for the longest time. So there are developers, and you might be one of them, who have a pretty good grasp on what a Lambda expression is. And if you are one of those developers, feel free to skip this screencast and move on to subsequent screencasts. We'll be covering a lot of the material that you already know. However, there's another camp of developers, or another group of developers, that are object-oriented developers who have not had exposure to functional programming in some form or another, and these programmers don't necessarily have exposure to Lambda expressions. My goal in this screencast series is to start from the point where an object-oriented programmer is, who doesn't know anything about functional programming, and take such a developer all the way through to being competent in writing recursive pure functional transformations. Therefore, I'm going to cover Lambda expressions in this screencast. I can summarize Lambda expressions in the shortest form possible. All Lambda expressions are, they're just a method. They're just a function. Functions and methods being interchangeable in this context. The difference between these functions and functions that you may already have exposure to is, first of all, these functions have no name. They don't need to have a name because of how they're defined. And second of all, these functions are declared in expression context as opposed to statement context. I'll show you what I mean by that. Most developers are familiar with using functions or code as data. All the way back in 1990, we could see function pointers in C. And in Java, there were listener classes where these listener classes were explicitly declared so that you could put custom code in these classes and this code could be called as required. C Sharp has delegates. Well, the easiest way to show what a Lambda expression is and show why Lambda expressions are useful in the context of writing programs in the functional style is to start with a little example that uses delegates and then morph that example into another example that uses Lambda expressions. And you can see how the code gets significantly simpler. So let's take a look at this concrete example here in C Sharp. Here we have defined up on the top a delegate type. Delegate is one of the fundamental types in C Sharp. We define a delegate type and this delegate type is called filter integer. This delegate type takes an integer as an argument and it returns a Boolean. We can then declare a method or two that the delegate can contain. So we can write a little method, this method greater than three, and this method takes an integer and returns a Boolean, and it returns true if the integer passed in is greater than three. And just below that, we have another method greater than five, and this method does the exact same thing, except that it returns true if the integer passed in is greater than five. And both of these methods, this method greater than three and this method greater than five, 
they're declared in a context in which you could also write a statement. You could, for instance, initialize another static variable and initialize that static variable to some particular value. Now, down here, I've written a little method called filter list of integers. This is a method that is similar to the where method that many people are familiar with, but I want to write this method in a very explicit way so that it shows exactly what is going on. This method, filter list of integers, it takes a list of integers as a source and it takes a predicate, the predicate being this filter integer type, which is a delegate, and it returns a list of integers. So this method declares a new list of integers, which is going to be the result. It iterates through every item in the source, and if the predicate returns true for that particular item, then it adds that particular item to the result. And finally, it returns the result. So down here in the code that uses the filter list of integers method, we first declare and initialize a list of integers. The code then declares an instance of filter integer and initializes that filter integer to the function greater than three. It then calls filter list of integers, passing in the source and passing in that delegate. And it gets back the results and it iterates through the results and prints it out to the console. And the code right below that does the exact same thing, except that when instantiating the filter integer delegate, it instantiates it with greater than five method rather than the greater than three method. And if we run this code, we see, of course, it returns exactly what we expect. The first list contains four, five, and nine, and the second list contains just the integer nine. So one of the deficits of this piece of code is that we want to understand what this filter list of integers does. In order to determine what this statement does, we have to see that it's passing my delegate one. We have to then go find the instantiation of my delegate one. We see that's newing up a filter integer delegate and passing in greater than three. Now in this particular case, greater than three, we know what it is. We wouldn't necessarily have to look up at this method and see that it returns x greater than three. But this is a super, super simple example. If you can imagine, there are much more complicated examples where the predicate may be looking at all kinds of different things in a class or in a, in a structure. What this does is this creates a lack of lexical proximity to the semantic parts of your code. So in other words, this x is greater than three is up at the top of this file, and we're interested in what that code does down here where we call filter list of integers. It's a kind of a dissonance between the locations of these two pieces of code. We can't look at this code and understand at a glance what it does. So let's change it and make it use Lambda expressions. Well, the first thing that we can do up here is we can just get rid of greater than three and greater than five. We still need our filter list of integers method but instead of having it take a filter integer predicate, I'm going to declare it to take a func of int comma bool. These are some standard C-sharp parameterized types that enable you to declare delegates in a really super simple fashion. And down here, let's change this code to use a lambda expression. Well, first of all, we don't need that declaration of the delegate. We're not gonna use it. Instead of passing my delegate, we're going to pass i greater than three. And we'll do the same modification to this example. And we're done. And what we can see here now is 
that we can look right here and see what the code is doing in that delegate. We can see that it returns true if i is greater than 3. And if I run it, I get the exact same results. At one particular time, one of my coworkers asked me, what exactly is this equal greater than? And the simplest way to explain that is that that equal greater than, all it is, it's the separation between the arguments to that lambda expression or the arguments to that function and the body of the function. So in this particular case, the argument to the function is i and the body of the function is i greater than 3. Now this is a particular form of a lambda expression that has an implicit return that where you have a lambda expression that doesn't have curly braces in C sharp, that means it implicitly returns the value returned by that expression i greater than 3. Interesting thing is that we can modify the form of this lambda expression and change it from this form into something called a statement lambda expression. And all we have to do to make this a statement lambda expression is put in a curly brace there and close it off with a curly brace. And instead of the body of the lambda expression being simply i greater than 3, we'll have it be return i greater than 3 and put our semicolon in there. And this code is identical in functionality to the previous code. If we run it, we get the exact same results. There's a little bit more to lambda expressions. You can have lambda expressions that take multiple arguments. If this were a lambda expression that took multiple arguments, then what you do is you could surround the i with parentheses and specify the second argument to the lambda expression. In this particular case, our code isn't designed to take a lambda expression with multiple arguments. But there's, there's a fair amount to learn about the syntax of lambda expressions. But the key point about this is that I was able to declare this function in expression context. When I'm calling a method, I can declare this lambda expression as an argument to the method. That argument is an expression. It's not a statement. So by writing this lambda expression at this little point right here, I've written a function in expression context. And that's one of the key differences between a lambda expression and writing a function or a method in the old style of writing a function or method where you write that function or method in statement context. Let's take a look at the same example in JavaScript. Here we have the exact same example. Of course, it's written in the somewhat simpler JavaScript syntax. Here I've declared the function greater than 3. I've also declared the function greater than 5. I have my filter list of integers. Of course, in JavaScript, you don't really have parameterized lists. Instead, you have arrays. You use arrays for lots and lots of things. So the code declares an array. The code iterates through the source. It calls the predicate on each item in the source. And if the predicate returns true, it pushes that item onto the result array. And then finally, it returns the result. If I run this code, we see the exact same results that we saw for the C-sharp example. So let's change this code to use a lambda expression. Here we can get rid of this greater than 3 method. We can get rid of the greater than 5 method. And down here, instead of passing greater than 3, I'm going to use the JavaScript syntax for declaring a lambda expression. And the JavaScript syntax is I specify function and the argument and open brace. my comparison, and the close curly brace. 
one point about JavaScript is JavaScript only really has the statement form of Lambda expressions. It doesn't have that shorthand form of a Lambda expression that has an implicit return value. It just always has a statement form where you have to put in your curly braces and return the value that you want to return for the Lambda expression. And I can drop down here and also write my Lambda expression there. And if I run the code, I see the exact same results. That's all I'm going to cover in this screencast. Key point about this is all Lambda expressions are, they're just a new way to write a method or a new way to write a function. In this particular context, functions being synonymous with methods. It's a very compact and precise way to write a function. In the next screencast, I'm going to talk about closures and why closures are important. So until then, see you later.